time. It's March 19th, which means this weekend I have to put in my peas because you always plant your peas on uh, the week or weekend of St. Patrick's Day. You really want to have them in by St. Patrick's Day, but I've been just a little bit otherwise occupied. Um, I've got the quail all moved. Got them in the high tunnel. We moved the high tunnel over to the east side of the yard. They seem like they're pretty content in there. And I've got the high tunnel anchored with water barrels. Next thing is to get this all raked out and then plant on either side. I'm going to have tomatoes and peppers. Instead of having the tomatoes and the peppers outside, the way I normally do, I'm going to have them under the high tunnel because they don't seem to do very well in the hot sun of our desert. And so you now people have said, well, cover them. Yeah, I could do that in the garden, but why not just put them under the high tunnel? It gets plenty of sunlight. And I've got this door here open. The one behind me is open. But there isn't a door at the other end. I thought there was when I bought it, but there isn't. So I'm going to open up a door and put Velcro on either side and then along the bottom to make sure that it closes nice and snug especially in the winter and then put some grommets and some laces so that I can tie it open tie it shut so that the little quail can have some nice fresh air and the air will pass through both ends so that's the plan for now um, the big project of getting it moved and getting the quail enclosure moved is done and that was really a big priority for me to get that done um, we've got patio furniture all uncovered and now I have my five gallon buckets ready to go well mostly got to drill holes in the ones that don't already have holes in them and plant potatoes in them. So that's going to be my potato garden right there. I've got a bunch of sweet potatoes growing on the, um, well, some are on the windowsill. Some I've actually got in the soil and getting them started. I may put those in buckets. I haven't decided. But I've got potatoes, seed potatoes, coming in the mail pretty soon. So I want to be ready for that. And now it's just a matter of getting the big garden ready. Working on that slowly. So many projects. So much to do. I'm leaving that covered for now. That's my rosemary and oregano. And there was thyme underneath there. Plus there's one little strawberry. You can see peeking out. That survived through the winter. I'm not sure how it happened, but it did. And then I've got some berry plants that I'm going to put along the fence line here and probably in a couple other places. I've got some grapes that I'm going to put along the back fence. Lots and lots of plants. But for right now, the garden is pretty bare. And it's just waiting for me to get in there with the broad fork and till it up when I'm not going to do the broad forking. And I have the 25 year old son out here doing that. And here I am in my indoor seedling starting operation. And it's now March. Uh, there's not a whole ton you can do in the winter time to get your garden ready, but there are things you can do. We talked about in January how you can get everything organized and get your seeds ordered, that kind of stuff, making your plans. 
in February you can do some seed starting and that's what I did was I started some tomatoes some eggplant um, some cucumbers um, and I started with some t sweet potato some old sweet potatoes that I grew slips out of slips are just um, this basically like the leafy stem and um, once they get have several inches long you snap them off and you put them in the dirt or you put them in water and let them root and then once they have roots you put them in dirt and they're good to go so this is my setup now and um, this is where everything is at this point um, as you can see I have some very healthy looking tomato plants here and here and here I have some kind of sad ones right there and right there and somewhat sad down here the sad ones are the ones that I just transplanted today and I'm not real gentle with my seedlings and I'm not aggressive with them but I don't worry too much about handling them so ever so carefully and you know they'll they're a little bit some of them are a little more shocked than others um, but all I did was the seedlings had gotten crowded in their little cells and so I've just separated them out some of them I put back into the cells and some I put into bigger pots now the ones that I put in the cells they're just the ones I had left I potted up the ones that seemed to be the healthiest the strongest um, got them squared away and then I had a bunch left over so I just put them back in the cells and so that's what I did with these up here and look how well they're doing I'm gonna have more tomato plants that I know what to do with cucumbers I repotted those, some of those over here today I just put the eggplant separated it out a little bit gave it some more room some more soil to grow in we'll see how that does I've never done eggplant so we'll see how that does and then these are sweet potato slips and this is what grows on your sweet potato when it's stuck in that water in that jar like I showed you last month and then when you got enough a pretty good size root cluster and you put them in the dirt I've got some over here and I've got some down here again more than I know what to do with um, I started peppers this week different kinds banana habanero and I'm not doing a ton of peppers this year we just didn't use them and then I bought some strawberries that I've got sitting in some water I got some raspberries some wisteria some grapes different kind of berries that I'm going to try this year but this is where I'm at for now so in March um, yeah you're going to want to transplant repot your seedlings maybe start things that didn't need to be started as early as others um, as you can see I just have regular shop lights I don't have special grow lights just regular shop lights and I have them on a timer so that it gets about 14 hours of bright light every day and then it shuts itself off so yeah even though it's nine o'clock at night and it's dark outside there's still bright light in here and they don't seem to care and yes they are in front of a window but this is a north facing window it never gets direct sunlight it's only indirect and it's been pretty cloudy so it hasn't gotten a ton of light now down in this bucket down here I have something that I'm hoping will actually take off I don't know I've never grown one it's a holly bush and I'm hoping that it does well but we'll see um Matthew's trying a little experiment he's got some scorpion pepper seeds that he is germinating and then we'll get them planted up see how that does I'm not gonna be handling those things I don't like peppers to begin with that are super hot and he really does so it's his thing and the habaneros I only grow for him that and the jalapenos and for him I like bell peppers Anaheim's um, banana peppers I don't I'm not a big hot pepper fan so that is where we're at for March 
repot your seedlings, separate things out into bigger pots. It's gonna take up more room, so hopefully you left yourself enough room like I did. I've still got a couple more shelves yet that if I need to expand some more, which I probably will, um, I've got room to do that. Hey, Wednesday! Oh goodness, here they come. We're getting rain today, which is why I'm glad I got all the things that I did done in the last two beautiful sunny days. Let Duncan come outside. Come on. Come on. There you go. They think I'm gonna give them something. I'm not. I've got the quail all buttoned up in the high tunnel. And some of my projects aren't quite completed. But everything is high and dry, which is the important part when it turns out to be this kind of weather. Ooh. I thought I'd take a second. Goodness quiet down for two seconds. Thought I'd come out and show you what I did in the garden. And as you can see, really not a lot happened. But I planted, oh whoops, this is a problem. I planted peas and onions. So this is the weekend of St. Patrick's Day. And that's when you want to get your peas and onions in. No, the snow and frost will not hurt them. Birds, particularly chickens, will hurt them. They'll dig them right up. So I've got bird netting and chicken wire laying down. But I made, we have this old bed spring that's just been sitting and didn't know what we were gonna do with it. But I saw on Pinterest, somebody used it as a pea trellis. So I'm gonna give that a go. And of course, that's not enough for my growing needs, so I just added a little extra fencing for it. I have not uncovered my oregano and my rosemary and my thyme because I don't want frost to lay on them. But I will when the time comes. In the meantime, that is all I've accomplished for the garden. But that was the main thing I wanted to do. Now it's just time to rest and relax and do indoor chores because it's gonna be rainy, snowy, cold for the next couple of days. And I apparently have at least one broody hen. That is Harriet. You're broody, aren't you, Missy? There's her sister. Megan. And yes, I named them after Megan and Harry because these are speckled Sussex. Oh yes, you're definitely broody too. You hear that sound? That kind of growl that she just made? That is very typical sound like that of a broody hen. And she is probably setting, let me zoom out. She's probably sitting on some eggs. Eggs that are not hers, because when they're broody, they are not laying anymore. But they'll sit on the eggs of chickens that have laid. You're just going broodies now, because you weren't before. <sighs> chickens. That's a problem this time of year, is if you're gonna have hens that go broody, now is when you're gonna find out. They'll go broody in the spring. I've got the setup for baby chicks um, on its way. And then I've got the, the brooder box right there. That's the brooder box. And the fence or the screening on the top of it. But all the rest of this stuff is just some of it, like the lights, are in preparation. They're all nice and clean now. Um, the fan is for summer, 
but that's not for the chicks as much as it is for everybody else. Whoa, got really dark there. <laughs> um, and then of course I've got my my Princey Eco Brooder, two of them, ready for those chicks. They're all nice and clean and ready. That's the main thing to do right now is just get everything clean and sanitized. And as you can see, I do have more of those mouse balls up here. Not because I think that the mice will come up there. They could, but there's nothing else up there that will interest them. Once I have chicks in here, they'll be interested in the chicken food. But they're just sitting up there drying so that I can put them underneath the rest of the coop. We'll see how that works. And I'll have to keep you posted on that. Hey, littles. What you doing? Huh? What you doing? You guys looking for some scratch? Okay. I'll get you some scratch. Don't say I haven't done anything for you. Over here, all cleaned out and dried are the buckets I'm going to use to plant my potatoes and my sweet potatoes. I'm going to use that pallet that's sitting back there to set them on so we don't have a big ant problem. We do have a lot of ants that will get into those buckets. And then of course I'll put chicken wire on top of them to keep the chickens out while they grow. Once they get to a certain size, the chickens won't bother them so much. Somebody must have... Oh, oh there he is. Come on, Duncan. Come on. Did I call you? I don't think I called you. No, I already gave you guys some. Nope, I already did. Sorry. You'll have to go over there and fight your way through the rest of it. Come on, Duncan. Come on. Come on. No, this way, you silly. Duncan, come here. <laughs> he wants to go in the other door. Well, you'll have to wait then. 